Hey guys, what's happening? So, if you've been watching my channel, you'll notice that I kind of got back into RF or CB radios or... Um, so I've been actually messing with RF for, since I was a teenager, but I kind of go in, in and out of it through phases. But it seems like every single time I get back into it, I, I learn a lot more. One of the bottlenecks or issues I'm having is I, I, I really just, I need a better antenna. So, I mean, I've been looking at antennas to buy and... Um, I mean, I have a sort of unique situation where I can't go crazy high. I mean, I can probably go a quarter wave high, maybe like eight feet above, because I'm already running like a 10-foot mast, like a conduit mast. So what I want to do is design like a like a like kind of like an experimental quarter wave antenna uh, where I can kind of experiment with the radials. So, so I designed this in Fusion 360 about uh, well, a couple days ago. And I've actually... Um, I recently just got a, a network analyzer, so like a nano VNA, v, a nano VNA, like a really like a pretty ingenious like network analyzer. So one of the things I wanted to do was do like a ground plane antenna. So the original idea was I was going to use a 102 inch steel whip on the top of this thing. And let me show you the thing I have here. It's a, like a Wilson antenna mount, 15 bucks. But I mean I could also do whatever I want to do <clears throat> on this thing, but but if you look at these different holes I drilled here, what I want to do is experiment with different radial patterns. So the antenna will be going through the top here. But, you know, with most of the, the antennas I've seen for quarter wave have been a 45 degree downslope for quarter wave. And then half wave, I, they, I see a lot with a 90 degree out, out, outward. I've seen a couple of, the, a couple of them with the up, upward slope radial. So I might try that, see how that works. But um, I'm probably going to focus maybe on the bottom top, but that's actually why I wanted a really good network analyzer or uh, a 10 analyzer. So I could see if the changes I were making or see, see what it was doing to the SRWR and like the internal resistance and that kind of stuff. Because I know that you can, you know, mess with the capacitance by having upward sloping antenna. So um, even just like maybe like moving around obstructions, you know, and create like an antenna pattern or a radial pattern that can maybe like help the antenna go around obstructions maybe. But um, like I said, this is just totally experimental. It's for my own fun. Um, I'm actually also messing with some dipoles too. But um, take a look at it. So this this is actually just gonna slide in some conduit. Some conduit will feed out the back. And I'd figure I'd use some of the extra holes to, with some set screws to lock it in place. But the the conduit and the and the and the what's it called should fit to the center of it. The coax should come to the center, through the center of the conduit up through this thing. So. All right, so now I gotta go out and machine it. So I think I'm gonna um, do some of it with my manual lathe and maybe some with my CNC. Um, I do actually have a fourth axis indexer. Um, so I need to come up with a solution to be able to tilt this thing at 45 degree angles. So you have 45, you have 90, then you have 135. So I have a few different angles to cut in here. And I'm gonna tap them with, uh, I guess, probably M8, maybe M8 thread. And then I'll just like buy, I'll just probably buy some like round stock aluminum, and tap that and try different lengths and sizes. But I mean, I could, I could try like 108 inches, which is like uh, what you're supposed to do. Kind of like, almost like a, it's not really a dipole, but maybe like three or four downward slipping radials at 45 degree angles at uh, the same length. So I want to make the radial the same length as the actual, uh, the antenna, the top antenna. But I think mean, I thought this would be fun to try, I guess. We'll see. All right. All right, so I got to go out to the garage and machine this, and hopefully this will, I can get this going in one go. All right, so All now right. that I have the idea on paper, I got to come up with a machining strategy. So my original thought was I was going to drill the holes, you know, the size for the thing and maybe the, the main hole. All right, so once I got the center hole drilled out, and if I had to go any bigger to expand it out, I'd use this... Uh, the boring bar here on the Sugami lathe um, to bore it out up to size to get that conduit in there. And then I would go over here to the mill. I mean, I guess I could do it on the CNC router too as well. I mean, that thing can do aluminum. But I actually 3D printed a uh, mount out here. Let me show you. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with this machine, I have an index around there, fourth axis indexer. So the center rotation, the, the middle ones, I just do on, on the uh, you know, the, the indexer, but then also on the uh, 
45 degree angle, I designed this uh, mount for the indexer. So I could put um, the indexer in a 45 degree angle to create those pockets, you know. And then also, because I need a flat flat space to do the drill, so. So that was my thoughts. I mean, I could do it on the, the CNC router because I also have a fourth axis indexer on that thing. So I was gonna take the six draw chuck off and move it on to this one. These are the exact same, uh, you know, they originally were made by, who are they made? Uh, Rich Mill, like a Japanese indexer. All right, so I think that's my strategy. So I'm gonna start with, uh, go back, I'm gonna start with uh, the, the lathe back here, drill the holes and then come back um, bore it out if I need to anymore with this boring bar and then go back and use the indexer to create the pockets. All right, we'll see how it goes. All right, so before I sign a drill, I'm going to do a quick face on this thing. Quick change tool pose for this thing. Make it a lot easier. Alright, so I'm gonna flip it around and then we'll do the other side. Yeah, I might or might not face it. I think I'm gonna either paint it or powder coat or resemble with it because I don't want to or anodize it too. I've actually made other videos on anodizing, home anodizing. Alright, let's run this thing. So now I'm going to drill the hole out for the main um, antenna mount. Alright, so on the last step, I'm going to use this drill, but I came out of the exact size. It's pretty close to this conduit, but because the conduit mass pipe needs to go into here, up to that line, a little blue line right there. So I measure about 70, that's what the, the tape is, the depth tape here. And then I'm probably going to have to go back and with the boring bar to um, you know, open up just slightly a little bit. Alright, so it's not to drill that big hole right there, so I might need to lower the RPM down a bit. Alright, so it wasn't really clear what I was trying to do here. I thought it probably would make sense, but I need to get, I gotta get this. This is the same size conduit I have on the roof from changing the antenna to. So the goal is to have the this latch into here. So alright, so if you're not familiar with the Sagami lathe, I think I've made a couple videos about it. Like when I did the conversion. So originally it was like a chucker lathe. Um all right, so got the boring bar. Put the cheat thing on there just in case. Even though I do actually have a touch screen right here, so everything coordinated, everything zeroed out. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna use like the drag wheels. I guess I could use like the mouse, uh, like the Xbox controller, but I'm just gonna use this in and out Z. And then uh, I mean I should know exactly at 70 millimeters where I'm at, so. Um, I'm going to bring this down and open this up to the size of the conduit. Um, I'll do 300 RPM and go.
the shape of the, the bit was kind of a, you know, obviously it's not a flat edge. Sort of annoying dealing with this, but because this thing is so much more rigid, um, cuts are better. Um, but it's also like having a DRO, so I can see all the coordinates what I'm doing. So let's do a quick face off here. So I'm gonna do a, a forward, yes. outside edge but it's actually going to act as like a protectant like an oxide layer so actually i'm going to do the chamfer on the manual manually here All right. All right, first phase is complete so actually what's funny is that something wasn't straight, so I, I um, had to bore it out a little bit more to make it even, but it's gonna lock down the nut. So um yeah, I'm gonna have to probably put a smaller washer because that's not gonna fit in here. Take a look. Machine looks pretty good. Um alright, so if you guys are wondering, this is the concept or idea. I think it was pretty obvious. So now I gotta drill those holes to hold the radials. Yeah, so it's how you think the face. Here. Do, I mean, the, the CNC thing is nice because it's I can I can precisely control the motor. Now that I have this thing faced off, those markings are actually where the holes are going to go. Um, you know, it's like 25 millimeters off the center. Where I'm going to do the actual like uh, 45 and what's it, I guess uh, 45, 45, um, 135. So 45, 90, and then 135. All right, so I got the indexer head set up here. So I'm going to use my little uh, Xbox controller here. You can see. So if I do eight eight uh, holes, then they're going to be 45 degree apart. And I can tell that on the DRO here, um, right here. So, you know, 360 is a full revolution, so it's going to be 45 degree in increments if I want to do eight. All right, change plans. I guess I don't use this very much, my six job track here, but it's actually not... It doesn't. It doesn't open up big enough to get this in there. I already tried. Actually, I even, I even took the the tines came off. So, um, hmm. I guess. I mean, this thing's also a a five C indexer. That's what this is for here. Um. All right. So I guess that'll be the end of part one. Um. So I need now. I need to come up with a solution. I might three D print like an insert. And create some sort of way of, of attaching this to this, but um, I do actually have a four drive truck, but I would, I'd need like a back plate for that. Um, all right, so I guess that'll be the end of part one. So, what I need to do is figure out a solution to find a way to mount it to my indexer. So, this obviously didn't fit in the, the six drive truck, so I'm thinking I might 3D print an insert and have like a, you know, like a thing out here or some kind of bolt or something to grab onto it. And spin it that way, but um, yeah, we might have to do it at a 45 degree angle this way and that way. So, I mean, if I want to do like the upward vertical slope, so um, all right, so let me know what you guys think. If this is a good idea, bad idea. Like, I know that, like, when you bring the radials up, you 
can increase capacitance. So, I mean, like I said, typically you normally see them like uh, 90 degrees or 45. But uh, I do actually have one of those nano VNA, nano VNA, I can't even pronounce that, nano VNAs coming in. Um, so that'll give me a way more better insight on how these uh, antennas are working. So, all right, guys. Cool.